three. Hello, everybody. My name is Dude, and welcome back to Dream Daddy Director's Cut. We're still continuing on from the beginning, so nothing's really new yet, but we're getting there, I hope. We walk down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the yes. corner. Man, this is such... This is in such convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I like, uh -huh. this. What's wrong? I want to go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I can just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to have make awkward eye contact with other people. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me, and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my person. Hmm. So. Dad, what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush with, with hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and you're now that jerk who left the <sighs> mug? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! You walk inside. Hey, uh, hey uh, how you doing there, sir? The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn in, well in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's, uh, kind of oh. dumb. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? Mm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking about it, but, man, we're in it now, and I can't hey. stop. Good on you. Mm. So it'll be. Ah. I scan the chalkboard menu and immediately overwhelmed. I'll have, uh... Spicy. Giant. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Giant word is a South African rapper. They're pretty well known for their evocative imagery and hyper stylized music videos. Their music is as catchy as it is disturbing. Oh. I'm doing the thing. Hey. They're coming right up. Mm. And for you, I have a macchiato de Marco, please. Oh. Coming right up. You want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, medium. Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Yes. I should change that, shouldn't I? Probably a little bit. What's this deal? Yeah. Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyway. Hey. Hey! Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumber support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges yeah. me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and always don't go. Also, don't go outside and talk to. <laughs> also, don't talk to people. See, we're making progress. But you assume that we want to talk to people, though. We don't. Matt sets our drinks down at the table, and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Yeah. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. We're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Flanky. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet uh -huh. you both. You gotta come back, come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. The two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure I'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Oh. You know what? you guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes up with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. Working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. I well, think we're gonna have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile. No, really appreciate the flavor sensations. Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Now we need to give that banana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate with the... I taught her well. <laughs> we were trained for this day. This is gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Matt serves each a piece. Amanda and I happily yeah. shout out, This is amazing! 
Thanks, the secret ingredient is bananas. Mm. Well, bananas. So any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you a dad b dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Grateful banana bread. Banana bread Kennedy's right said banana bread is what I said before. Honestly, I still think that's the best one. Right, like right said Fred, but now it's about banana bread. I think the youngsters would like it despite not getting it. That actually has a nice ring to it. See? Really? Well, no, but right said banana bread. Strong decisions? That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I got it, thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. See, it sounds good when you say it. Oh my. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? It's Reyes. We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? We should get back to unpacking. Got a lot on my plate right now. Did you know that moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? Is it right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everyone's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell bad? Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, Pops. Let's go home. Again! You're probably... lying to me just to not... Just to, just to be nice. But whatevs. I got to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I got some good work done. The washer and dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Oh, where are my manners? My name is... is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Flanky. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, well, Between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come... And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have been something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh... I meant... Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh... Yeah, okay. Is the missus around? Mister, actually. And, uh... No. They're dead. Super dead. Actually, very crusty dead. I dated a skeleton. Uh... I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzic quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hi, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter and Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph wa starts walking away, but stops for to think for a second and turns around. In all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. You ever need to talk about stuff? I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. I don't know, I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Well, aren't you a charmer? Not really. With that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. 
Amanda walks into the living room, crumbs on her face, and cookies in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See? You're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. I think we should get a ton of good neighbor points if we get it, if we bring this back. We're gonna be the best neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness! Man and I step outside. Shoot, I'm actually not sure where his house is. I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the, in the yard. Good night, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. They all look soulless. As they did before. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, return this nice plate. And thank you for the cookies. You see, definitely your Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. But they don't act like him. They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Well, okay, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. Kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. I need something to get off my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest my eyes. I've been awake for, what, three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come behind us. Flanky, bro! Bro! I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Bro! Bro. Holy. Wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Can you not moan in my ear, please? We're not even dating yet. You're just moaning in my ear for no reason. Yeah, wow, you look great. Ha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped! Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello and hello, cute baby. Ah, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been too long. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where have you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Man and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? I mean, Ashley. Ashley's her name. She actually still goes by Smashley, and, uh, we divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? Right? Kickstand Craig is a father of three. Kickstand Craig? <laughs> yeah, that was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of kickstands. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. Ah, oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of a daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promise myself I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Hey, yeah, no. Nah. Bro, come on, it'd be fun. We can grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We can do a bro brunch like the old days. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why's that? Craig I knew was not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. 
And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong? He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. That you do. Amanda and I flop down on the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. You're never going to be putting my stuff back right back into these boxes in a few months. Oh, don't say that. Not that. It's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit. I'll text you every day. I'll take lots of pictures. You can obviously blah, blah, blah. You promise? Of course. You gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog! Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Medium-sized dog. Handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for you to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman, I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Ha <laughs> ha! Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda starts over, darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out one and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a lever opener, but okay. Held my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed reapplication, blah blah blah. We... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter onto the coffee table. Sweetie. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. No shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Your admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much you put, how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is gonna want to snatch you up for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Um, before I forget, and Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight, so. You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have to, you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. I am secretly the mayor of this town. <laughs> Amanda, the town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my mayor stuff. I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. He was a mayor, right? He was not. Shit! <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Go to bed. I'm wiped. Have fun with the Emmas. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget that you have a meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Alright, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome. Night pops. Good thing I didn't go drinking and get, uh, almost molested by a drunk guy that I didn't want to get molested by in the first place. Oh, I have to wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Oops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your stool on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. Not the last thing I want to do is right now is work out, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. All right. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep on the blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Which is basically at egg nips. If you don't go to gym in egg nip shirts, then you're not truly a man. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. 
The neighborhood is quiet and serene with this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Hey, bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. Where's River? Or is she just being babysat by her ex? Definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Ready to kick some butt? Help! This is it. This is how I die. Ah, it'll be alright, dude. We'll ease you into it. I thought he would have appreciated the joke, but alright. We head into the gym and immediately... and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. It seems like Craig is friends with all of them? He high-fives and finger-guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmill and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be, walking. So I know we're on treadmills. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. What is that? All that other stuff. Craig laughs. It might look a little scary, but I guarantee all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine I think was used... originally used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Training to crush people's skulls with his thighs. <laughs> he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he can crush people's skulls with them. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. <laughs> oh no, Greg's turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? A couple years. What do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. <laughs> The goal is to live with as few worries as I can muster. The lost shaker of salt was a metaphor. A metaphor about what? About not being able to shake salt into something. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying! I can feel my life force straining through every orifice of my body! Hey, remember when my fish died in college? <sighs> no! I don't like the story. <sighs> Oh god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. We were at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction. So of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. And then you drop the fish and it's... Flopping around, you panic, so you run up to me post-keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off the ground, and you're yelling at me like we have to leave. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And then we get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. For the next day's alive and well. We never did catch the great fish... Th they never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and I look, oh, look, and he looks me over the injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. Alright, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green liquid. I stare at what must be an apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thanks. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Oh, this is really good. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm really proud of it. What's in it? Green shit. I mean, if you ever want to work out again, maybe we can try running around the neighborhood and tre if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Is that a pun about the fact that I did speed in high in college, or the fact that we uh, that I just launched myself at the wall at a high speed? Good one. 
Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? What year is it? Shit, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Dad tip 56, go ask your mother. I arrive at Amanda's school and check out at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully somebody will know. Hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that it's only two minutes late. It was room 103 or 108. I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas' classroom is? The youth turns around and looks at me down with heavy-lined eyes. Oh. Come on, kid, I'm late for our meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, you're gonna help me or not? Oh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left, can't miss him. So that's not actually his class. Yeah, that's not him. Head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vegas' class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. A punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. Yep, I whacked where that low gent, low rent Gerard Way is standing. Fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the class next to his locker. Lucien, don't you have third period to get to? Oh, fine, Mr. Vega. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. You must be flanky. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Sure. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Alright, where were we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class erupts in laughter. Alright, alright, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Middle schoolers, right? What do you mean, high schoolers? Both. You know, budget cuts. Right. They don't pay him double, do they? <sighs> That's another matter entirely, though. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Boblum. Mr. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda is a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Well, we just moved, so... Well, we just moved recently, but it was on, only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps anything... If she keeps heading down this road... I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Yes? Did you ever catch that rye? Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! They caught the rye! Good. I'm going to save here and call this an episode, though. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you to Shroud and Levial for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to these fine people for supporting me on Twitch. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.
Bye-bye.